Hi everybody, welcome back to Art on the Creek. My name is Anne and we are in my home studio in Parker, Colorado. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad you're here. We are going to take a look at the February 2024 Sketchbox. Now, I know that this is a monthly subscription kit, but there are an awful lot of hydrous watercolors out there on the market. And that is what is in this particular Sketchbox. And I've always kind of shied away from them. I've tried a few, haven't liked them, but I haven't tried one of the ones that's here in the sketchbox. So now I'm really intrigued and I wanted to pass this on to you guys because I think you might be happily surprised. Let's go find out. I am always so excited when I get my email every month that says another Sketchbox is coming because this monthly art subscription, um, I've got the premium box and I really love these, you guys. They're so fun. This is a good way for me as an artist to try new art supplies that some of you may already be familiar with, but I probably would have walked right on by <laughs> in the art supply store. Of course, some of them are right up my alley, but some of them are really pushing the envelope for me. Now, these are hydrous watercolors, which means they're in liquid form. And we'll get to those in just a minute. We've got a pot of uh, bleed proof white and some other little fun things in here. This is a Winsor & Newton calligraphy brush. It's a goat hair brush with a bamboo handle. And I cannot forget, they always send these cute little stickers. They're vinyl, so you can put them on your water bottle, on your computer, whatever you like. I tend to put mine on a sketchbook. Here are two colored pencils from Statler, the one brown and one green. They look pretty straightforward. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of information of those right now. We also have this fine liner. It's a uh, permanent ink and it is a zebra sarasa black or sarasa, not sure. I really like this fine liner, you guys. It's like one of the, the smoothest ones I've used. Uh, the Bien Fang watercolor paper is acid-free cold press, 140 pound, 228 GSM. And this is pretty typical for the size. Uh, for a sample of watercolor paper in these sketch boxes. Uh, this is four inches by six inches. And I'm gonna tape this down here to a board. The board I'm using today is just the back of a block of watercolor paper, so hang on to those. It's really good chipboard, and uh, you can use them for a whole bunch of things. I love to use them for little portable art uh, areas, artwork areas. So I've just got that tape down there with some washi tape and I'm gonna use a ceramic palette today because I want the one that has little wells in it. When we're using hydrous watercolors, we need little tiny pots. Those are the best way, the best way to do it when you're working with hydrous watercolors or inks. This paintbrush has a bamboo handle and a plastic ferrule and a very long, long uh, filament. The brush itself is a size four round. It's very long, very tapered. It's a calligraphy brush kind of a mop brush and goat hair. If you've uh, ever felt a goat or if you have goats, if you felt a goat at a petting zoo, can it kind of uh, their hair's really kind of wiry and bristly. I always have to mention the price of these subscriptions because as an affiliate, I want you to know that I paid for my own money with my own money for these subscriptions. Um, but there it will be an affiliate link in the description below if you decide you wanna jump into some of this. If you were to pay for all of these items individually, so it's one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight art supplies. If you were to purchase these individually, you would pay $56.71 with the monthly subscription. And it goes down the more months you purchase, but I'm on a six month cycle. I'm only paying $30 a month. I thought I was paying 35, <laughs> but I'm only paying 30. So already just without tax, I'm saving I'm saving $26.71. That's like getting half price just about on everything. I I think this is just the best way to do this. And if you're, and by do this, I mean to try new art supplies that maybe you saw in the art supply store and were intrigued or, uh, you know, had no idea what to do with it. Well, you know, if you sign up for something like this, then maybe you can have a chance to, to explore and learn more about art supplies you may not have been aware of. 
Uh, the other advantage to having something like this is uh, you can also go onto their website and just purchase uh, one or two items or one kit. You know, they have all kinds of sales and everything too. So check it out, see what you think. And if you do use that affiliate link and end up purchasing something, of course, that does go to help my channel. And I do appreciate all of that support that you guys give me. What I'm doing is I'm putting just a few drops of each of these paints into a well. And I want to leave some space in between because I'm going to do some mixing. Uh, the first one, the Aqua Drop by Schmincke. It is a liquid watercolor, but it is pigment based. And it says here it's transparent and has five light fastness stars. So you're getting a really, really good high quality product with Schmincke. It's definitely a brand you can trust. And I am thoroughly impressed with this one. This is the one that I thought, okay, if I had tried uh, Hydrus watercolors first by using the Schmincke Aqua Drop, maybe I wouldn't have been frustrated with them. One of the biggest frustrations I had when I initially introduced myself to Hydrus watercolors was way too big of a palette and the wrong brush. Uh, the amount of intense color you get from them is really incredible. They come in a leaf green and a violet with this set and these are dye based watercolors. So these are, they're very, very concentrated and that's what you're getting. Whenever you use a Hydrus watercolor, it's amazing how little you need to use. Now the other thing that you always get in a Sketchbox is a sample piece of art and we can see what this artist did here. Her name is Jenna Lee Marie and her Instagram handle is on the back. Uh, I can put a link to her page in the description down below in case you're curious. She did some beautiful florals with this set which is exactly what these colors do make you think of. Um, you can see as I'm using this brush, it acts just a little bit differently. These brushes are, like I said, goat hair, so they're not vegan, but they are formulated to work with inks or, in fact, watercolor. So if you are a Sumi A artist or ink stones, or if you have the Gansai Tombi watercolor palette, this brush is really going to be amazing for you. Uh, notice when we swatch these out here, the colors are just so vibrant. They're, they're almost neon, really, all of them. And really, I'm quite pleased with this little selection of three. These three colors are almost a split complementary palette, so they're quite harmonious together. <laughs> we can get some good mixes here and, uh, and have a lot of fun. And these colors are so happy and so full of joy. And when we are in the depths of winter, <laughs> these colors are really nice to look at. It just looks like spring is just around the corner. So I'm going, I've gone into that uh, bleed proof white now. Now it's in, in the little pot and uh, it's kind of a thick, really thick um, texture, like, like heavy body acrylic. Sorry, those words were hard for me to get out for some reason. Um, and I'm, ex I'm expecting it to do just this. When I drop it in wet on wet, it's, uh, it's dissolving a little bit and it acts just like liquidated gouache that you put on uh, wet watercolor. Let me just get rid of this guy here for just a moment. And here you can see I've already swatched out the brown and the green colored pencils on this watercolor paper. And now I'm working with this fine liner and it is so soft and so dreamy. It really feels like butter. I really like this. It's it's a nice fine liner, you guys, and it retails for only $1.98. I think that's a good price. Um, I would say it's about uh, 0.5. Um, not exactly 100% sure on that because I didn't see anything on the lid that, uh, that said what it was. But I really love this. It's a good size. I think you guys will get a lot of use out of it. So let's just play around here a little bit with this brush and uh, some of this liquefied watercolor. I've got this sped up at about eight times the speed, but I'm just trying to do some loose florals here, playing with uh, colors initially when it reminds you of uh, a bouquet of flowers. Uh, painting these loose florals is really a quick and easy way to test the colors. Now with this brush, I'm really having a learning curve. I thought that those petals on the flower would be a lot wider. You could definitely make wide strokes with this brush, but uh, the way that I was manipulating it there, it, it just, uh, they came out narrow and I decided, oh, well, there'll be a little different kind of flower, maybe a little Stephanotis <laughs> or something like that. So I've got uh, a rose in the center that I've just gone back in with that magenta and now I'm kind of mixing the magenta and purple. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of that white and I'm splattering it on there just to kind of add uh, just a little bit of, I don't know, some zest to some life. I do love to use splatters. And now we'll go ahead and go in. I've mixed some of that green with the purple and uh, just darkening up the leaves a little bit. 
It's really very fun to play with this. Uh, this one is just going to go by real fast and furious here because what I wanted to show you is some other creations that I made. Because I was thinking, you know, what else has these colors? I was really kind of stuck thinking about florals. And then I looked up and I saw my snack, which is a Granny Smith apple. Um, I've got a real interesting perspective on this apple. And I thought, you know, maybe this will be kind of fun to paint this apple out for you guys in three different ways to show you some different perspectives um, and how easy it is to manipulate these paints. Now, the green and the purple are dyes. So they're going to stain and that is something that my fingers are actually still green. I'll have to use a, a special soap to kind of get that off my fingers, but um, it's not, it's not horrible. It's not off-putting. Um, just something to remember. You might want to protect your surface area and wear some kind of an art apron. Um, I've got that out of frame a little bit on the bottom, but what I've done is uh, try and get some of the brown on the bottom to create kind of a, a surface for that apple to sit on. So I'm kind of going to work on these in little different areas. This Bien Fang paper is really, I'll be completely honest with you, it's not my favorite as far as cellulose papers go because it was very, very easy to get those cauliflower blooms. Now, now that I know that that's a characteristic of this paper, um, I will alter the way that I use it in the future. But this first encounter with it, um, not so much with the, with the flower, the floral spray that I did, but with this one, with the apple, it was really just kind of uh, making me think, gosh, let me let that try and I'll start another one. <laughs> So that's what we're going to do here. And I'm just kind of trying to look at the apple, get a little different uh, different viewpoint on it. And this time I'm going to use that colored pencil to sketch it out. With the, uh, with the first apple, what I did was just use the paintbrush to kind of draw it in. So now that I've got that sketched with the colored pencil, let's put in a little bit more of that green. I ended up using a lot of green. One thing about these uh, goat hair brushes, they're thirsty. And I like that. I really like how uh, they absorb the water. So now this is going to be kind of a, uh, a top-down view of the apple. And I've gone in and darkened that green a little bit with either some of the purple or some of the magenta. Pretty much you can use either one and come up with a very similar effect of a, an olive green or a brownish green. And then I lifted some off and I'm leaving some space there for some highlights. I really wanted this apple to be... Oh, very, very uh, loose, kind of uh, geometric in places. And um, I really kind of was frustrated when I was working on it. This was in the uh, hot mess stage for longer than I wanted. And here you can see some cauliflower, bloom, cauliflower blooms come right back in. So I'm just going to set those aside. They're in a bit of a timeout right now. And now I'm going to work on yet another view of this apple. And this time, I think I've got a really good handle on the, on the paper. And I know how this ink is going to act on here, rather the watercolor, and I think I can figure this out. <laughs> you know, this is one of the things that I think is so fun about getting these Sketchbox kits, is that it really encourages me to just play and explore. And like I said, these are things that I normally probably would just pass by from the art supply aisle. But when they're sent to you and you say, okay, it's kind of like the chef, what is that called? the chef show where they, um, they give them the picnic basket and they have to come up with what to make with these ingredients. Well, that is kind of what this is like. And it's so fun to just be able to do it at your own pace in your own home and really just have a blast figuring out what you can get out of these art supplies. Now, this bleed proof white is very different from other things that I was used to, other types of bleed proof white. But now that I've got it all kind of figured out, and I love how milky that bleed proof white looks on the apple because it really kind of gave it that waxy feel that some uh, apples have. Now I'm going around this with the fine liner and I put some colored pencil in there and I thought, okay, well now it needs a place to sit. So let's give it that table to sit on. And I'm going to use some of this magenta because I haven't really used it yet. And you guys, this particular hydrus watercolor i think what i would like to do is get some more of these aqua drops uh, and kind of do a uh, another review featuring just these schminka water drops because they are or excuse me aqua drops this that magenta was really amazing and so powerful so concentrated and i love that it's got that light fastness rating on it now the purple and the green 
won't have a light fastness rating on it at all because they are dye based. You know, so often in art when we're creating and we don't really have a plan, we go through a lot of experimental stages. And in fact, I went through the entire pad of this Bien Fang watercolor paper. Um, but I'm glad I did because I ended up with six really good paintings that I, I really was quite happy with. Um, good meaning I was pleased with the outcome. And I, what really kicked it over the edge for me was using that magenta in the background. I loved the contrast with the green. It felt like it was finally that match made in heaven that I was looking for because, you know, when I swatched these out, I knew that they worked well together, but I just couldn't wrap my brain around it for some reason until I got in and I played with it. And so often that happens to me. So often that's how I approach art. Um, that's how I approach a lot of things creatively. And I wanted to uh, take this third one and just kind of give it a little kick in the background with uh, a little bit of purple, just to kind of make it a little bit more moody than the other two apples. So this trio of apples turned out to be one of the most fun little art projects that I've made in a very long time. And I didn't expect that. What I expected was uh, just to sit down and paint some flowers and be done with it and then decide if these uh, hydrous watercolors were for me or not. But what ended up as a result was I created what I think is a really cool trio of paintings that I'm going to hang on the wall so you guys will see these in future videos. You'll see them back there um, in my studio. I really like the bright, vibrant nature of these colors, and I'm sorry this is kind of low and out of frame. I think I was really in the zone here, and I forgot to check uh, what I had done with the focus. So my apologies there, but there will be a, a full shot at the end where we can see these. I really just got in that zone, and I had so much fun lifting off color at the end, adding some white to give it that wax shine, really seeing what I could do with the graphic nature of these dyes. These colors are so intense and so strong in the, the purple and the green. And then with that uh, aqua drop, the Schmincke aqua drop, that magenta is just really feels like watercolor. It's just such a bright, bright magenta. Look at the little apples. I love how these turned out, you guys. Let's see what else we can create because now I think I've really got a plan. You know, to be honest, this whole experience was a little like listening to the, the pieces of a symphony in an orchestra come together one by one. They're great by themselves, but when I finally figured out a way to harmonize them and make them work together, I was really in the zone. I was having so much fun. Um, I loved the mixed media aspects, adding some colored pencil to this. I was just experimenting here and I really like when I do light and wash, I like having those lines not go exactly where I put the wash. Sometimes I will intentionally extend them beyond like you can see here on the, the purple flowers I did that. Um, just putting a little bit in the rose here just to kind of suggest some, uh, some places where the petals would end. And now I'll go in and kind of exaggerate these purple petals again. And I'm also uh, doing some of the same sort of exaggerated marks on the leaves. So I'm not really trying to outline things. I'm just using that fine liner to lay on top of it. And it didn't skip once. It didn't lose ink. It didn't have any trouble at all. I really like this. And that will probably end up being a greeting card. So let's slow this down a little bit. Let's look at this in real time. And you can see how this brush operates. And by pressing, lifting, and turning the tip of the brush, you can create a beautiful grass-like leaf. So I'm gonna do that one more time here on this. And I know the green is very, very pale. I'm kind of trying to finish up what I've got on my palette here. And I don't wanna put out uh, any more new, new drops of dye because I wanna go through and use what I've got without wasting any. Uh, going into the magenta just a little bit here and let's make the petals on a carnation. Now I'm going to do this very loosely and I'm really having fun just going from memory on what a carnation looks like here using the brush, holding it at different angles, seeing what I can uh, have it do. I'm really enjoying this brush. The one caveat of this brush that I wasn't thrilled about was it had some loose hairs but it seems to be done shedding now. Um, I hope so because the, the hairs are very long and it was really kind of uh, inconvenient when it did happen. But let's get this dry and then now we're going to look at the fine liner. And again, this is the, uh, the Zebra Sarasa. I think that's how you say it, the fine liner. And it's in black. I don't know if it's available in other colors, but it is a permanent fine liner. And I really look forward to trying this on uh, conventional watercolors because when you're using it over these hydrous watercolors, there's no skipping, there's no having to, to kind of wipe the pen on a 
uh, paper on the side to get it going again. That just didn't happen at all. And it was very smooth, very lovely to work with. So I really like this pen. The one thing I love about ink and wash is when you're done putting the ink on and there's no set order, you can do it whichever way you want. It just kind of looks magical. And then when I added this colored pencil, I thought, oh, isn't that fun? It's a totally different texture, a different level of green. That really kind of make it made it pop a little bit for me. So um, I hope you guys see that as well. Now I'm going to go in with the brown pencil just because I can. And uh, I'm going over the center vein in the leaves here and a little bit down the stem. One thing on this leaf that I'm working on right now, this one on the left, right there where I'm kind of going back and forth toward the bottom, I think there was some of that bleed proof white on there because the colored pencil really just kind of slid over that area. And I think I had just a touch of the bleed proof white in there. I don't know what's in that bleed proof white. It is water soluble, but um, it acted a lot like the other bleed proof whites that are more of an ink. So it might have some shellac in it, some little varnish that um, uh, makes it so that it's uh, a little more resistant to things, uh, which is probably what gives it its bleed proofness, but um, that's just a guess on my part. What I want to do now is something really, really fun. This is my last page <laughs> in my little sample pack here. And I want to play with this brush in different uh, varying washes. Now, I want to let me slow this down a little bit so you can see what this brush does. When I make these next strokes here, notice what happens to the filament. Can you see how it really splits apart there and creates a lot of little individual lines? There's some dry brush coming up right there. This is what is so fun about a goat hair brush. Now, a dry brush technique, for those of you who don't know, is uh, that space over there on the right where you can still see some of the paper through the stroke, and I just covered it up a little bit there. But when you're working with a goat hair brush, and now I'm going in with some of the bleed proof white, I'm just kind of really cleaning up the palette here. When you're working with a goat hair brush, what you can take advantage of is those, the coarse hairs of the goat, the coarse nature of those hairs. And what it will do for you is to give your brush a little bit of an extra oomph where you can make fine lines, you can make broad strokes, and you can really use that dry brush technique for textural effects that will work very much to your advantage. So if you want to paint something like trees, landscapes, mountains, rocks, bricks, tree bark, animal fur, anything that has texture, skies, clouds, a brush like this will really enable you to do that just by holding the brush differently. You can really get a lot out of this brush just by letting it have a different angle on your paper. So now I'm just kind of playing. I'm putting in some purple circles. I've got uh, one pot over there on my palette had a little bit of the bleed proof ink in it. One pot had some uh, plain purple. Another one had some purple mixed with the magenta. So let me finish filling in these circles and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. I've got my circle templates out and I think I'm going to accentuate some of the circles that I've already drawn in here with the paintbrush with this fine liner. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a few extra ones. So I'm just gonna have a lot of fun. I'm kind of overlapping things, kind of trying to match what I've got, but not necessarily. I'm going to add more than I've, uh, than I've put down there, but I really like the sheer layers and the translucency of this, this dye-based watercolor that is, uh, that's liquid, this hydrous watercolor. It's just so fun to play with. Um, I didn't notice a huge color shift. I mean, it's there but I didn't notice a huge color shift when it dries. Now, when we're working with conventional watercolor, you can definitely see that color shift. I didn't notice it as much here. And one thing I will tell you, when you're working with dye-based anything, uh, you're going to notice a lot of staining. So you won't be able to lift as much. You'll still be able to do lifting techniques, which is where you um, get a damp paper towel and uh, rub off in, in one of these stencil shapes, for example, or to create a bokeh effect, or you get your brush wet, tap it off, and then lift off using a rather firm stroke, and then come in with a dry paper towel and blot that off, and that'll create a nice subtle highlight. I use that technique a lot. When you're working with dye-based inks or watercolors, it's just a little bit more difficult to lift off completely because of the nature of the dye. It really does grab onto the paper. So let's see what this looks like when all of these circles are complete. Well, if you haven't guessed already, we are going to make some soap bubbles. I just thought that the different levels of purple in here just made it look like a huge cacophony of bubbles. And 
why not? Let's just go ahead and add these highlights and really get these bubbles to stand out. I've gone in with a little bit different paintbrush this time. This one is much narrower. I want to say it's a zero, although I can't be 100% sure. It might be a one. Um, I don't think it's as big as a two, but no matter. It's a very small round brush, different brand, and uh, I uh, like this brush as well. It is a Traquel Protégé. If you're interested in these, I will put a link uh, down in the description for those as well. Now, these uh, lines I'm making on the bubbles, I really like when I, some of them, when I got to the tail end, it ended up doing a little bit of dry brush, which just made those highlights look that much more natural. That is one thing I really did enjoy about this Bien Feng watercolor paper. It had just the right amount of texture on it. At first, when I mentioned that I wasn't so sure about it, um, once I figured out its characteristics, then I was able to really enjoy it. It just acts a little bit differently than any other cellulose paper that I've tried. Um, I'm not sure that I'll buy it again, but I am grateful for the opportunity to try it. And if you're one to try cellulose papers, and you can kind of tell from the way this one behaved that maybe this is one that you'd want to try, well, this might be your opportunity to do that. I really am enjoying making these bubbles. Look how cute they are. They're just so, so chubby and round. <laughs> And I really like how this uh, bleed proof white is going down. Something about the texture of it, that, that really thick liquid texture. I really do enjoy the De La Rowney bleed proof white that I usually use. It's almost exactly like PH Martin's. It's in a, a taller pot than this and it's solid. But as luck would have it, this particular one arrived in my studio at the right time because this Jacquard bleed proof white um, is... Uh, ready to use. It's brand new. Something happened to my De La Rowney Bleed Proof White. I think it got some water in it and I closed it up too soon and now it's just a big pot of flakes. So can't recommend doing that. Um, I, you know, I can use it again but now I've just got it sitting open and I'm going to let it dry out and we'll see what happens. I hope I can revive it. But in the meantime, I've got this one. Uh, so far the De La Rowney has not, uh, with all of its little flakiness, it hasn't really uh, prohibited me from using it. It's just annoying because the little flakes kind of stick to the paintbrush even though you can liquefy them completely. So this one, having this, was just a timely uh, bit of serendipity. So I'm just going to close this up and uh, get it ready to use next time. I've cleaned out the lid that I was using for a little mini palette there. And you can kind of see all the green dye on my fingers. I kind of look like the Incredible Hulk in places. And um, now that I'm doing the voiceover, it's already almost washed off completely. So no worries there. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this. And take a look at what Sketchbox has to offer this month if you're looking to expand your art supply arsenal. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye now.